What do you think happens to humanity once computers, algorithms, artificial intelligence, however we call it, know us better than we know ourselves? And of course you can say that it, it's not going to happen. There, is all, there will always be something about humans that no matter how much information you have, a computer will never be able to understand that. I find it hard to credit, but um, maybe that's your opinion, but I really want to go past that and think what happens deeply. Not when it falls into the hands of some malevolent dictator. People usually go to the dystopian scenario that you have this totalitarian regime that follows everybody all the time, knows everything about you, and, and that's terrible. Right. And, but let's leave it aside. Let's say it's not, it's not a totalitarian regime, it's not dystopian. The system is really in your favor. It's a benign system. But still, it knows you better than you know yourself. And it can basically take all the important decisions in life for you. What to study, what music to listen to, which books to read, who to marry. What happens to human life in such a situation? Yeah, I certainly think a software agent will eventually know you better than you know yourself or better than other humans do. And the whole purpose of, okay, why do I learn things? Why do I pick certain experiences? I mean, we have values. You could say that certain drugs give you pleasurable experiences, and yet we find it abhorrent that somebody would, you know, sit there for a decade and just enjoy those drugs as opposed to get out and, you know, make movies or write, write books. Mm -hmm. This software agent will be able to engage you in such a fulfilling way that it's a very sophisticated pleasure mechanism. And then you'll, you'll have this deep philosophical question. The machines will be able to make enough food for us. What should we do? You know, when we organize socially, to what purpose? I find the answers to when you get past the thing that evolution picked us to do well, I don't know the answer to that. How much time do you think we have until a computer can know me more or less better than I know myself? We're still a few inventions away. This thing where we just scale up these machine learning systems, they don't represent knowledge in a deep enough way. The interesting test is when can a machine read a book and process that information, say take a test, way better than humans? We're not there yet. We don't know how to represent knowledge. But in the next, certainly 50 years, the inventions that will let us do that, either by cheating and looking at how evolution did it in the brain or just inventing it de novo, that will happen. Then you get machines that are more expert than we are and can take over in terms of inventing things and managing things in a way that really makes you question the purpose of individual activity. I mean, if the machine is 10 times better, that's a little disheartening. <laughs> yeah, just a little disheartening. And the thing is that we won't be able to understand how they make the decisions because they make a decision in a completely different way than humans. Humans, at least when we think consciously, we can't take into account more than two, three, four salient points. Like if I'm a banker and you come to me and you ask me for a loan, then I will basically make my decision on the basis of three, four salient features about you, like your past credit history, or if I'm biased or racist, maybe on the basis of real race or gender. This is how humans do it. Now, the thing about AI, it can take into account thousands and thousands of tiny data points. Like, at what time in the day you came in to ask for a loan? And it has a 0.07% influence on the decision, but it's there. Right. Sometimes people say, okay, even when computers will make the decisions, we'll have a law, like in Europe, with the GDPR, that it has to be explained. Like, humans have the right for an explanation. If you 
applied for a, for a loan, the bank said no, you have the right to get an explanation why the bank said no. But this is completely irrelevant because the bank will say, well, we have this algorithm and the algorithm went over masses of data. If you want, we can print you all the data, but we can't make sense of it. We just trust our algorithm. The thing is that if the algorithm made a decision in the same way as humans, we wouldn't need it. We would just have a human banker. I wonder if you, you, Yuval, and also you, Bill, do, are, do you, are you concerned about the autonomy of AI? Like what, what happens when they are so sophisticated, it no longer feels like the relationship is us programming it? Eventually that will be an issue. I'm not sure there's much we can do about it right now. Eventually the universe gets into this heat death thing where complex objects this can't exist. heat death thing? <laughs> okay. Well, How much we should that later. think way out in the future, you know, and can we change that versus what is kind of real today about suffering and autonomy of humans versus other humans? You know, if I ever figure out how to avoid that problem, sure. But you can spend a lot of time on it without coming up with much. And it's not imminent, but hmm. it is possible that we'll be delegating a lot and our sense of who we are and why we do what we do will be deeply challenged by that. I, I agree that, I mean, the kind of Hollywood science fiction scenario of the robots are coming to kill us because they are evil and they want to take over the world, this is, we don't need to worry about that. But and the, the other kind of autonomy, it's already here. I mean, the idea that a bank won't give you a loan because an algorithm said no, this is not science fiction. This is reality. Increasingly, in more and more parts of the world, and I think we should be concerned about it. 